China has ambitions to be a global technology leader. In this two-part special of Insight, I travel across the country to understand how it is leading in two key areas. Artificial intelligence. China has a large economy of scale. The user case for AI technology is massive. And renewable energy. In this episode, I explore China's staggering clean energy industry. It is on track to have more than double the solar and wind capacity of Europe by 2025. The determination of China to move towards net zero is the strongest in the world. Yet, the story is full of contradictions, because China is also the world's biggest polluter. Coal, coal power plants are still the lowest cost energy option in China today. What is the real picture of China's green revolution? And should we be worried about its dominance? I begin my journey here at the edge of the Gobi Desert in China. I'm in Dunhuang City, one of the oldest cities in western China, some 2,200 kilometers from Beijing. See this solitary wall behind me? This is Yumenguan, an important landmark in Dunhuang City. It was constructed more than 2,000 years ago. Through it, traders carried precious jade along the Silk Road. Today, this lonely wall is all that remains of Yumenguan, bearing silent testimony to its past glories. Now, if only walls could talk, what stories will this solitary wall in the middle of the Gobi Desert tell me? But it's not to say that the best days of Dunhuang are behind it. Indeed, I've come to this ancient city to see something so modern, so state-of-the-art, that is something straight out of a sci-fi movie. Seeing it up close is much more massive than I imagined it to be. I'm standing before the Dunhuang Molten Salt Solar Thermal Power Plant, also known as the Super Mirror Power Plant. It can generate 100 megawatts of electricity, making it the largest of its kind in China. This stretches far into the horizon and the light bouncing off the mirrors is almost blinding. It's really reflective. To tell me how it works is Liu Fu Guo, general manager of the plant. So this solar thermal plant in Dunhuang costs more than 400 million US dollars. It is built and operated by Shouhang Beijing Resources Saving Company under a government scheme to reduce the cost of electricity. 
Construction took just two years, from 2016 to 2018. It sits on some 7.8 square kilometers in the arid Gobi Desert. That's over a thousand soccer fields. The desert landscape is the ideal location for the plant. There is no shortage of direct sunlight and very little cloud cover, just about 21 days of rain a year. 那老师您这里的热电技术跟太阳能板的技术比较起来有什么分别我们这叫太阳能的热发电跟普通的就是常规的这种太阳能的光伏发电最大的区别在于光伏的发电是光和电的转换通过太阳的光进行转换的在没有
So when we look at uh, the history of China's solar panel production, um, it is very interesting to notice that in the beginning there was no domestic market. It's mostly the European demand that had triggered China's investment in the whole renewable energy sector. Uh,到二零零六年，随着欧洲光伏市场的启动，我国可再能发颁布实施以及金太阳示范工程、光伏特许权招标等一系列政策的支持。啊，中国当时主要的商业模式就是从国外买来原料啊，买来设备，利用国
呃，包括了很多的内容，啊、呃，其中一个非常有代表性的内容是光伏在农村的广泛的发展，就是由国家拨付资金，然后在村里面那些最贫穷的村庄里面，给他们建设一个电站，然后把这个电站的收入都是留给这个村里面，用于解决村里面的一些呃贫穷人口的问题。这些光伏企业，他们到村庄里面来建设光伏电站，呃，因为有一些农村，他的老百姓他的投资能力非常有限。同时呢，企业呢会给老百姓给屋顶的租金，那这样呢，这个租金就可以在没有任何投资的情况之下，用于改善老百姓的生活。This is part of the Solar Energy for Poverty Alleviation Program announced in 2014. Homeowners lease their roof and land to solar companies. In turn, the electricity generated is sold to the grid, with profits shared with the homeowners. 但大体来说，我们大约知道的是，在每户在一千到两千元之间的这种情况比较多。那么，如果能够每年有光伏，通过租赁光伏得到两千元的屋顶的租金收入，对一些呃贫穷地区的老百姓，这个还是一个比较可观的收入。China's National Energy Administration. Says about 400 million people benefit from the Solar Energy for Poverty Alleviation Program. By 2020, it increased solar capacity by 26 gigawatt, much more than the initial 10 gigawatt target. 那么还有一种情况呢，是农民们他们合作在一起，然后建设一个小型的光伏电站。那这个呢，在中国叫做合作社。Following Professor He's lead, I wanted to see one such project for myself, and headed to Xi'an Province. And I'm headed to a village called Yunmengxiang, and already I can see signs of the clean energy transitioning happening here. And this is where I found a solar cooperative. I'm just the solar cooperative leader. I'm the one who is responsible for its design. 施工，这个捐赠是由村级企业所有，就是相对来说就是村级的筹建资金，然后给农户带来一定的收入。每户的基本上增收就是百分之全年的百分之十的增收。Seventy-eight-year-old Madam Li lives in Yunmengxiang Village. She's retired now, but she's getting income from the adoption of solar panels on her rooftop. 其实我们这个电发了。全部是进电网了嘛？电网以后打给我们村，村委会给我们再付款。每一家的不一样，电板不一样多嘛。在每一月我们还抽钱，给我们有一点好处。儿子外打工嘛，这就是我的收入。这样吧，农村的家庭里面，无论无论是他的屋顶还是庭院里面安装了光伏，发的电量会远远大于他们自身的用电量，啊。所以我们国家呢就规有政策，要求国家电网必须积极地接纳这一部分电力，并且呢跟农民签订一个长达二十五年的合同，用一个固定的价格，啊，因为呢这个价格是固定的，所以老百姓的风险就得到了极大的降低，这样使他们愿意参与到这样光伏的投资的这件事情当中来。But despite the success of such programs. China's clean energy story has one glaring contradiction. China may produce the cleanest energy, but it is also the world's largest polluter. It is responsible for about 30% of greenhouse emissions, in a large part because of this. Last year, about 60% of China electricity is generated by coal. And China is building more coal plants than any other country. Last year, it approved the equivalent of two new coal plants per week. Coal power plants are still the lowest cost energy option in China today. It wants to grow the economy by several percent every year. So if your energy system is dominated by coal and you keep growing, your emissions will grow. China sits on huge reserves for coal. It does not want to import 
energy from other countries. It wants to use as much local coal as possible, right? local resources, and that's where coal is so attractive. China doesn't have a good alternative of heating uh, besides coal power plant because the clean energy generation is mostly intermittent. They need to have continuous sunshine or continuous wind blowing in order to generate enough of the supply. If you build one more um, power plant that using solar or wind, you almost have to build a separate coal power plant in, a, in order to stabilize the power supply. So coal power plant in many areas of China is simply a necessity. Uh, it's hard to be replaced. For these reasons, coal use reached record levels this year. And it is expected to keep growing till 2026. The economic growth dominates everything, all the thinking and the environment comes second, right? China is still too much focused on itself. And therefore, I don't think they are ready to serve as a global role model in the sustainability arena. The coal expansion rate was so alarming that the Chinese government issued a rare rebuke to itself in 2021. An inspection team from the Ministry of Ecology and Environment criticized the National Energy Administration for not controlling the coal boom. Despite that, the Chinese are optimistic about reducing their carbon emissions. We have the largest manufacturing um, industry in the world and we produce for the rest of the world and uh, our you know, energy composition as of now uh, is largely dependent on coal and uh, so it's a situation in transition, right? Mm. And uh, the determination of China to move towards net zero is the strongest in the world because uh, from the time of China reaching carbon peaking, which is, uh, I guess, slightly before 2030, yeah. to the time China will reach carbon neutrality, that's 2060, it's only 30 years. Mm -hmm. While in Europe, it takes 60 years, <laughs> right? Because they were peaking, I guess, uh, you know, 20 something years ago, and uh, they will be uh, reaching the carbon neutrality by 2050另外一方面呢除了光伏之外还有一个转型也在中国非常广泛的开展叫煤改电也就是中国的农村呢还有一些家庭他们过去使用燃烧煤炭来在冬季取暖呃现在呢我们政府采用了补贴的方法把这
from Dunhuang, the furthest western Chinese city on the ancient Silk Road. I make my way to Xi'an in central China, the former capital city and starting point of the ancient trade route. According to the US-based National Renewable Energy Laboratory, six out of the world's top seven solar manufacturers are Chinese. And here in Xi'an is number four on this list. Longyi Green Energy Technology. With revenues of 129 billion renminbi, or about 17 billion US dollars, the public listed manufacturer exports to 150 countries. Long 光伏呢也是成为全球主要的大多数地区的最便宜的一种发电并网的这样的一个选择。In 2022, Longyi added another feather to its cap. The company set a record for silicon cell efficiency. It measures how much of the sun's energy is converted to electricity by solar cells. It was the first time a Chinese company has held the title. 我们公司最新的光伏电池技术叫HPBC技术 Higher cell efficiency means that the panel can produce more electricity, bringing down the cost per watt. Elsewhere in Xi'an, I met up with Tony Xie, an activist for renewable energy. With the government firmly behind the green push, Tony has seen money pouring into the sector. People see there is a very positive or more confirmed uh, political commitment on this. So uh, this, this uh, I think, encouraged investors to join in this game. Just the past uh, three years, we have over 20, 10 billion size investment fund established, especially for this carbon neutral uh, direction. Tony is the founder and director of Blue Tech Clean Air Alliance, or BCAA, in China. It is a non-governmental organization that helps to identify and incubate promising clean energy startups from around the world. BCAA is working with startups in several cutting-edge clean energy fields, including carbon capture and nuclear fusion. China now leads the world in terms of the number of research papers published in clean tech. The country's pole position has also given the industry a certain prestige. That suddenly creates a situation where China offers internationally attractive salaries and working conditions, like research funds, to anybody on the planet in a sense. And of course there are a lot of clean tech researchers from China who left China to do their PhD and to get their training and many of them now return to China to work on this green and green energy revolution. The latest unicorns in China are mostly along the new energy supply chain and if we look at uh, the figure from last year 35 companies uh, are considered the emerging unicorns and included in the Forbes uh, ranking. Uh, most of them are in the battery industry and many of those companies had received state funding. However, going all in on clean energy has risks. 
In the US, for example, there are fears that the clean energy transition would erase jobs in the fossil fuel industry. This was also a concern for the Chinese at the beginning. We had a lot of debate 10 years ago. There was a view that if you do too much green, uh, you're not helping with poverty alleviation because uh, many of the polluting companies are generating jobs. Okay. And if you're shutting them down, then they will lose jobs. Okay. Carbon neutrality process itself mm -hmm. should create more jobs. For example, you install you know, the rooftop solar. It takes a lot of people. Mm. And, uh, and therefore, um, we were actually saying retrofitting of the building mm -hmm. is a huge creator of new jobs in the coming 30, 40 years, because each building is going to become net zero. Longyi, for example, hires about 60,000 people. Many of these jobs did not exist before the Green Revolution, although the picture is more nuanced. It's not the case that everyone in the dirty industry, uh, which was the industries that were more or less involved in the fossil fuel, can easily be transitioned into the green industries. There are some estimates from Chinese un universities. So far, there are only about 1% of the workers that used to work in the dirty jobs uh, that have successfully transitioned into a green job. Most of the workers have to transition into other lower, low-skilled jobs or other dirty type of jobs. It's a matter of how to move people from the sector that's losing job yeah. into the sector that's uh, you know, requiring job. And uh, that uh, friction needs to be addressed to th some extent by the government to provide training and retraining. And also the companies and financial sector should play a role. Nonetheless, on the macro level, China's bet on green has paid off. In just the first half of 2023, China exported 114 gigawatt capacity of solar panels on the way to eclipsing 2022's record. This is equivalent to the installed solar capacity of the entire US at 113 gigawatts. But this dominance has got some countries worried. Since 2012, uh, Europe and the U.S. started to implement anti-dumping and anti-subsidy program against China. And as a result, there are more restrictive measures against the China's exports. China要要要加大对中国的光伏产品的进口的这个税收。啊，这件事情呢，干了好多次了。那我们感觉这是因为美国为了保护他自己的光伏企业，因为美国的光伏企业的成本。the U.S.-China trade war intensified last August when President Joe Biden banned the export of advanced chips to China. The EU also has plans to ban Chinese solar panels, claiming they were made with forced labor from Xinjiang. Then earlier this year, Beijing hit back it announced that it is considering a ban on key solar technologies. China controls 75% of the manufacturing process to assemble solar cells and modules, as well as 85% of solar cells production. China also dominates 97% of the production of solar wafers and 79% of the production of polysilicon, according to an International Energy Agency 2022 report. Such a ban could ripple through the solar supply chain. When it comes to the competition between China and the US, the technological decoupling in the high-tech sector is quite real. There is a real competition for who's going to own or lead the transformative technology in the future. So now China feels it has to flex its muscle, and if you do that to me, I do this to you. But I really hope it doesn't lead to this. It would, there would be no winners in such a Green take more. When former U.S. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan, China cut off climate talks in protests. But this July, U.S. climate envoy John Kerry visited Beijing, a long-awaited trip to restart climate negotiations. 
John Kerry's visit to Beijing is certainly a gesture to show that the U.S. is willing to continue the communication and collaboration with China uh, in the climate change front. But uh, in terms of the details of the plan, it's quite lacking. In a way, it is still a positive sign for China because that door is not completely closed. And uh, uh, given that uh, climate change is uh, one of the very few sort of a common goals, right, between China and the U.S. And also, uh, most of the green technology are actually helping consumers uh, rather than, you know, helping the defense. Why not collaborate? And a few months later, another breakthrough. At the APEC meeting in November, Presidents Biden and Xi Jinping attempted to repair their fractured relationship. The two leaders agreed to renew the decades-old Science and Technology Agreement, this allows for cooperation in R&D between the two superpowers. A move that Tony welcomes. Internationally speaking, I think now climate change is uh, universal. It's everywhere. We cannot find a, a place that we can have a common ground. I think it's, it's really it's a failure of this <laughs> human civilization. In China, as with many things, the push for the green energy revolution is topped down by the central government. But what do ordinary folk think about this? I've been traveling across China to learn about the country's monumental green leap. And on my last day, I've come to the Parkview Green Fang Ti Mall in Beijing. But it's not for any last minute shopping. You see, this mall, as its name implies, is green. The open space here is not air conditioned, it's yes. natural air. Only in the retail space, there's actually air con. Can you explain to me okay. how that works? So, you 事实上就跟你人的鼻孔一样 the other point I noticed is that there's a lot of natural light here. So that is part of your design? Yes. Originally,如果从这个building的外观看,它是一个斜的金字塔。那因为呢,太阳从东边上来,从西边下去,那我们那时候在算整个北京, 三百六十五天的日照，所以呢，我们最后决定是把最矮的那个斜的这个金字塔最矮的地方放在西北角。那也就是充分的让我们从早上八点到下午四点，四栋楼都有自然的光线进来，我们可以节省百分之五十五的
And now, when it comes to new buildings and construction projects, China has in place strict guidelines and considerations. For example, it's mandatory for all new buildings built since 2022 to install solar systems. Carbon emissions of new buildings have to be 40% lower than 2016 standards, which means no more than 7 kilograms of carbon per square meter. The push forward effort is real. For a lot of the government, a local government, this is part of their evaluation when it comes to uh, the economic achievement. So they have spent a tremendous amount of money to uh, push the companies to adopt a clean tech and also to reduce their use of coal and other polluting technologies. Currently, the mild weather outside is keeping the ambient temperature of the mall at a comfortable 22 degrees. But just before I came to China, the country experienced one of its hottest summers on record. And some parts were deluged by disastrous floods. Many experts believe these erratic weather patterns are related to our changing climate. And according to a survey by the European Investment Bank, 73% of Chinese think climate change is a major threat to society, compared to 47% and 39% of their European and American counterparts. So, the impetus for China's green push is as much political as it is economic. The political leaders are very aware that pollution in big cities or some regions can cause dissatisfaction and mass protests even. And so I think they like this idea of pushing the green energy revolution and thereby also fighting local pollution in China. So the journey started with air pollution, but uh, the focus has gradually shifted over the last 10 years. Uh, we are currently seeing um, new initiative in the carbon intensive sectors to decarbonize, such as in the steel sector, cement, petrochemical, paper, textile, in all of these areas require a lot of technologies. I spent two weeks traveling across China to understand the country's green energy revolution. There are contradictions and concerns. But in speaking to different people here, I found consensus in one area. Virtually everyone I've met, young and old, is aware of climate change. Hello, A sentiment I found when I met up with a bunch of students from Tsinghua University. How important is the issue of climate change to you? Ciò 那么还有，包括刚刚说，就是那个野生动物保护的话，那很多动物也会失去它自己的家园。Is climate change something that's taught in schools in China? 其实说到气候变化，我感觉这个这个知识它并不是一个单独的课程，它应该是跟随我们从小到大一直一直以来都会应该去了解的一个丰生活的一个方面。What do you do in your daily lives to reduce carbon emissions? 比如说像我们学校我们学校甚至就是连电动车就是禁止使用的就是我们大家都是骑自行车来回就是非常的绿色环保去购买水果的时候会去购买那些包装较为少的气候的变化不应该分国际因为它是整个地球的一个生态全是
or environmental, China will continue to be the dominant force in renewables. And while I understand the concerns over China's monopoly, if we take the politics out of it, in the end, it can only be a net positive if there's more clean energy production for all of humanity.